So guys, many people interact with the stuff that we put on social media. And one of the things that we do regularly is talk about how we help our clients get in the best shape of their life. And in doing that, what we do, we talk a lot about our case studies. And actually, one of the f number one things that's popular with our case studies and comes up every single time is always to do with increasing calories. And so this video is going to be about fat loss and some of the fundamentals that you need to get right for fat loss. And then adding on to that, when I'm going to get into the video a little bit later, is all about making adjustments for fat loss. Because there are so many people that literally hit a plateau. And they hit a plateau in, in their fat loss and obviously nothing changes. And they think, well look, I'm going to the gym, I'm doing my, I'm doing my training, I'm eating well. Now, one of the things that in the industry we, we look at, you look at weight loss clubs, you look at slimming clubs, you look at all the different variations of, of people that say they're helping people with body composition. And they, they all, all follow a very similar system. A lot of trainers still out there follow a very similar system. I'm just gonna get my client eating healthier. I'm gonna try and get my client eating a little bit more food, less food. And if you're talking to anyone that's involved in slimming and weight loss, the number one tool for them is calorie restriction. Now, as with anything, the number one thing that happens with any form of calorie restriction is you're going to revolt against the process. There's, there's no way anyone can go very, very low calorie and train and not get to a certain point where psychologically they just can't do it anymore. It's not sustainable. And that number one, that real key word is sustainable. Look, I compete, right? My guys and my, our clients, they get ready for shows, ready for photo shoots. Some of them are just day-to-day -day lawyers and housewives but want to get in the best shape of their life. And to do that, they set a time frame within the year where they really push it. And yes, at some point, calories do have to come down, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But calories have to come down, and then guess what happens at the end of a bit of a calorie-restricted phase? You look forward to your best meal, you look forward to bringing your calories up, so going low calorie is not sustainable. The other thing that happens when you go low calorie is metabolically, your body, and your hormones that regulate a lot of your metabolism, especially thyroid, starts to downregulate. So you get a downregulation in a lot of the hormones that are responsible for helping your metabolism, metabolism stay elevated. And once they start to drop, the amount of food that your body requires to actually function, say at rest, drops. Now, if you then add in exercise, the body's gonna need a lot more fuel to be able to help shift body fat. And if you're eating a very, very low calorie diet, there's absolutely no way that the body's gonna be in a favorable place to just wanna let go of body fat. So what starts to happen? Muscle tissue starts to break down, you start to feel fatigued, you start to feel weak in the gym, and you think, what on earth is the point? So this takes me back to the point as to why we increase uh, food with our clients. Most people will come to see us having been under eating. And if you watch the video that I talked about recently on uh, building muscle tissue, most people don't eat enough to build muscle, let alone lose fat. So let's say somebody comes to see us at, I don't know, 60 kilos, and they're eating 900 calories. All right, so a female at 60 kilos eating 900 calories. 900 calories is way too low for somebody training three or four times a week. It's very low just for, for anybody, in that matter of fact. Now, if you were to set somebody's calories up, to an ideal to lose body fat, for that sort of weight, you would set them around about 13, 1400 calories. Now, you have that big deficit between what they're eating now and you, the, the big difference between what they're eating now and, and what ideally they should be on to lose body fat. Now, most people freak out because how can increasing food help your body shift body fat? Well, one of the ways that you can do that is by increasing the amount of food that you eat, especially from good quality food sources, number one being protein, and lifting weights while still doing a bit of cardio. Lifting weights is going to stimulate muscle tissue. Stimulating muscle tissue is a metabolically active tissue that's going to increase over time your metabolism, the amount of energy that you burn. It's also going to preserve muscle tissue and it's going to preferentially force your body to predominantly use fat as a fuel source. Great. So we've now got an increase in food which doesn't work for fat loss. Well, evidently if you follow the stuff that we do, it works very, very well. We've got people feeling better 
because they've got more fuel. They'll be sleeping better because there's more fuel. They'll drop in body fat, like you wouldn't believe, and drop in weight. But one thing that they're holding on to is muscle tissue. Now, you might say, oh, you know, I've seen all the weight loss stuff and people losing a lot of weight. But what you don't hear about is actually how people really can't sustain this for a long term. So if people are wanting to change their body put composition and change their shape, something has to be sustainable for quite a while. You have to be able to, you know, if somebody's 18, 19% body fat and they want to build a better physique and then slowly and slowly and slowly improve on that, it's going to take a little bit longer than 12 weeks. And even if it is over a 12 week period, if you're going to slowly increase the actual amount of training somebody's doing and you've got to reduce something to be able to lose more body fat, if the calories are very, very low at a starting point, you've got nothing to use to make any changes. So when we increase calories slowly to a point where fat loss stops and weight loss stops, that allows us then a point to then starting to bring the calories down. When we can start to bring the calories down, which will move me on to adjustments, we have training that we can increase throughout the week. We have a little bit of cardio that we can play with so we can increase output. But in most people's cases, if you're very, very low, cal low calorie, all that's going to do is start shutting down the body. So we have to increase the body's metabolic efficiency to start with, and that's by going through a phase of increasing calories. And at the same time, you lose body fat and you increase muscle tissue, so you have a win-win overall. And then at the point where we stall, then we start to bring it down. So that then brings me on to adjustments. Now, for most people, when it comes to uh, fat loss, there's never really any adjustments made. You just train a lot harder. Um, you might start somebody out on a low calorie diet straight off the bat, but it's ineffective. To be able to make adjustments, you need to be conscious about whether or not you're gonna make changes with food. You need to be conscious about whether you're gonna make changes with cardio. You're gonna to need to be conscious about whether you make uh, changes with uh, supplements or training in itself. So you have kind of four variables to play with. Now, where does this come from? Well, it certainly doesn't come from studying the work of weight loss gurus. It certainly doesn't come from the um, work of studying uh, slimming style gurus, or even standard kind of people that call themselves fat loss, because all they do is just pull calories down and increase training output. Then when you look at the art of bodybuilding, because people have got to get themselves in the best shape of their lives for photo shoots and to do bodybuilding, it's a very strategic and careful managing strategy between lowering calories, manipulating calories, manipulating training up or down, manipulating supplementation and manipulating some cardio. So in doing so, in, in order to manipulate that as you go through, you've got more tools to be able to play with. If you are going to set yourself up on a fat loss plan, I'm just gonna give you a couple of numbers that you need to consider. Now, for most people, even following a very, very low um, calorie diet plan, and you'll know that, you'll know the symptoms and side effects of all that because you're gonna be feeling um, very, very lethargic, you're gonna be struggling to recover in the gym, often not sleeping very, very well, you'll be pretty ratty, you'll be hungry all the time, and they're all, they're all signs that something's going wrong, especially if you're in the early days of fat loss. Now, I'm gonna give you a couple of numbers. If you're very, very new to training, you should multiply your weight by 11 calories per pound, okay? So 11 times your total weight. If you've had your body fat done and you're over 18% body fat, multiply your lean body mass, which is gonna be your percentage of body weight less your total weight by that number. If you're obviously a lot leaner, say you're about 15, 16% body fat, that, and you have more experience in the gym, then you're gonna multiply your uh, weight by 12. So we're gonna, if you've had less training experience, you're gonna have less ability to output, less effort in the gym, you require less calories to start with. If that works out, for example, to be 1,500 calories, that's still gonna be where you're gonna lose body fat. But if you're only eating 900, spend the next four to five weeks slowly increasing how hard you train and slowly increasing the amount of food you're eating, maybe by only 100 calories every two, two and a half weeks, okay? Watch what happens to your body fat, it should be coming down. Watch what happens to your weight, it should be coming down. And be the next kind of wave of person that raves about increasing your weight makes a huge difference to how your body composition looks and also how your fat drops off, you build muscle and look fantastic.
This is an insight into fat loss and an appreciation for our thought process and my thought process into how we kind of manipulate a lot of the variables and some key figures that's going to help you get in fantastic shape. Guys, as always, give this page a thumbs up. If you like the video, subscribe because there's always plenty of new videos coming on the channel and I look forward to sharing more inf information with you soon.